in some respects to what we've seen with uh, the Eurozone. Can there actually be some form of um, consensus? Because remember, if you actually trace the Eurozone line, there was no real sense of agreement on that. But a big issue to discuss further on down the line. More updates later. Back to you. Thank you. We now from the London Stock Exchange is the mortgage expert, Melanie B. And Melanie, a very good day to you. Hi. What's the rationale behind these moves? There is one school of thought which says that these two companies have had low rates in the past, so perhaps a game of catch up is being played. Is that fair? Everybody else has followed their lead, so is it inevitable that other companies will take their cue? There with the numbers, but 3.75%, how does that translate on the payment of an average mortgage? What are we looking at in terms of pounds, shillings and pence? As well, that given what's, what's latterly happened with RBS in Halifax, there is the possibility that they could go for another hike further on in the year. How likely do you think that that is? The business increasing for those who actually offer the fixed rate products, given that uncertainty? Very, very briefly, the, the real driver to all this, of course, is the Bank of England keeping rates where they are at the moment. But do you envisage a rate hike further on down the line this year? And we'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. We've got time now for a very quick look at the financial markets in Europe. Still up and running. A pretty mixed picture, not just in London, but of course, the rest of Europe as well. But again, gains there for BP. Hardly surprising because they did actually manage to reach a settlement with that Gulf of Mexico spill. But remember, that's just the first tranche of legal settlements. So uh, we'll keep, keep you posted, actually, with what happens for the rest of the afternoon. But it's back to you, Emily. Juliet, thanks very much. For a look at the European financial markets, they have now closed for the day. You can see there, well, actually, we've got the, the UK markets, but the European markets, they're actually trading lower. And that wasn't really helped by events in China, where the Premier, Wen Jibao, actually cut the country's growth target to an eight year low of 7.5%. And of course, there is still some uncertainty surrounding Greece's bailouts. You can see it really reflected in those numbers. Interestingly enough, we actually saw some, we're seeing some losses there for the Dow Jones in the industrial states, the United States, actually trading lower, not helped by the, this Chinese news, but also quite surprising given that their PMI actually came in quite strong. But looking at the broader UK picture, uh, again, you're seeing this losses in the FTSE 100 and the FTSE 250, but there are one or two individual players which are attracting interest for their own reasons. For example, BP, just to put those shares in their context, they've actually hit their highest level in more than a year. And that's after the company announced it had reached a massive settlement with victims of that Gulf of Mexico oil spill. And the company the share price earlier struck a high of 512 pence. Again, to put that in context, that's the highest level since January 2011. Now, Glencore, this is a company which trades in everything. You name it, it trades it from wheat to copper. Their profits rose by about 7%. They came in at just over £2.5 billion. Also, as well, Ivan Glassenberg, he's the boss of Glencore. He's actually banking a dividend windfall of £69 million. He ain't Paul. Let's speak to David Jones. He's the chief market strategist at IG Index. And he joins me now from the city. Uh, let's start first, David, with uh, the Glencore boss, Ivan Glassenberg. Does he deserve this multi-billion pound win forward, if you choose to call it? The company which I focused on was BP. Now, over the weekend, they did strike that settlement. But is it possible that perhaps this is the lull before the storm? Because there are other settlements in the pipeline which could be perhaps substantially more costly. Thank you much for joining us with that Thank assessment you. of the financial markets. More business updates later. In the meantime, it's back to you. Thank you very much, Juliet. To stimulate growth. Meanwhile, the UK's biggest mortgage lender says that it is raising the rate of its standard variable mortgage from May. The Melanie Bean from the mortgage broker's private finance doesn't believe that other lenders will necessarily follow suit. I now on the corporate front, the commodities giant Glencore has released its first set of annual results since it was listed as a public company. They now, the European Union will today lay out new plans to get more women in the boardroom. Commissioner Vivian Redding will take the first step towards introducing mandatory... Earlier, I spoke to Dr Ines Wichert, who's the senior psychologist at the Conexa High Performance Institute. She's also an expert on women's leadership development. And I asked her whether women should be judged on meritocratic terms only. Dr. Ines Wishart. Now, Britain's biggest retailer, Tesco, says it's going to create 20,000 jobs in the UK over the next two years. The supermarket is already the country's largest private sector employer, with almost 300,000 people on its payroll. The new well, Richard Brasher is the UK CEO of Tesco, and he says the new posts are good news, not just for customers, but also for staff.
OK, let's take a look at the financial markets. Europe, of course, is closed, but we've still got activity on the Dow Jones Industrials in the United States. And yes, a day of declines. If you actually want to look to someone to blame, then point the finger at the Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao. What happened was that he cut his nation's growth target to an eight-year low of 7.5%. So consequently, we saw that hitting a number of mining shares, etc., and other commodity stocks. And also, as well, don't forget, there's the impact of that deal from Greece. Still some of the devil in that detail but the US market's still active. We'll bring you more updates throughout the day, but in the meantime, it's back to you, Joanna. See you later. Thanks, Thank you. Juliet. Using the rate of its standard variable mortgage from May. The Halifax being from the mortgage broker's private finance doesn't believe that other lenders will necessarily follow suit. Now, on the corporate front, the oil firm Glencore has released its first set of annual results since it listed as a public company. Now, the European markets have been closed for some time, but the United States still trading. Yes, everything is in decline. There's one simple explanation for this, and that is China, because the Premier, Wen Jiabao, actually cut the growth target for his country to an eight-year low. He took it to about 7.5%, and there's still concerns surrounding Greece's bailout. Remember, Thursday, the deadline to reach a deal on that bond swap deal. More updates, of course, throughout the evening. Back to you. Thank you, uh, Judith. See you later. Well, the business secretary, Vince Capel, has admitted to the BBC that he is worried about the future of the Ellesmere port factory. Figures released earlier today show that Britain's important service sector grew last month, but, but not as much as expected. Fulcher from the Chartered Institute of Purchasing and Supply is still optimistic that the sector will remain vital for the UK economy. What? Andrew Coulter speaking with me earlier. Let's take a look now at the financial markets. Europe, of course, has closed. And indeed, the United States closed a few moments ago. In terms of these declines, well, the explanation really lies with China because it was over there that the Premier Wen Jiabao actually slashed China's growth target to an eight-year low of around 7.5%. And, of course, that impacted on a number of uh, commodity groups, mining groups, etc. because, again, China are a very big market, so the fears that perhaps that uh, demand may slow down. There's also also uncertainty surrounding Greece's bailout deal, particularly a deal which is meant to be reached on Thursday about the bond swaps. That's the latest business news. Of course, there'll be more updates later. But for now, it's back to Tim. Uh, Juliet, thank you Cheers, very thank you. much. Right, so Juliet here now with all the business news. Hi. Hi, thanks very much. Let's start first with the headlines. And Vince Cable has told the BBC he's worried about the future of Vauxhall's Ellesmere Port Factory. The comments of the business... Now, the chief executive of Opel and Vauxhall, Karl Strach, has vowed to, in his words, work aggressively to make the brands profitable. Mr Strach was speaking at... Well, the business secretary, Vince Cable, has admitted to the BBC that he's worried about the future of the Ellesmere Port factory. Well. Now, this week marks the three-year anniversary of the Bank of England slashing interest rates to the historic low of 0.5% to stimulate growth. Meanwhile, Britain's biggest mortgage lender says it is raising the rate of its standard variable mortgage from May. The Halifax says only being from the mortgage broker's private finance doesn't believe that other lenders will necessarily follow suit. Uh, the commodities trading giant Glencore has released its first set of annual results since listing as a public company. They show a 7% rise in net income. Now, figures released early today show that Britain's important service sector grew last month, but not by as much as expected. Well, Andrew Coulter from the Chartered Institute of Purchasing and Supply is still optimistic that the sector will remain vital for the UK economy. Now, companies are too slow in promoting women into the top corporate posts and mandatory quotas for women in boardrooms may be the only way forward. That's according to the EU's Justice Commissioner, Viviane Redding. Well, she... well, earlier I spoke to Dr Innes Wichert. She's the senior psychologist at the Conexa High Performance Institute and also an expert on women's leadership development. And I asked her whether women should be judged on meritocratic terms only. Okay, it's time now for a quick look at the markets. They have, of course, closed, but uh, losses across the board, not just for Europe, but also for the United States throughout the evening. But in the meantime, it's back to you. Okay, Juliet, thanks okay, very thank much. You. Thank you. Right